News from a Russian court in Moscow. American basketball star Brittany Griner has pleaded guilty to drug charges. Griner was detained at Moscow's airport. This was five months ago when security officials found cannabis oil in her luggage. Я хотел бы признать себя виновной по обвинениям при Да, но я не хотел в намерении не хотел никогда нарушать какой-либо закон Российской Федерации. Я я уторопилась, упаковывая свои вещи в багаж. И так и случайно эти кадры же оказались в моих вещах, в моем багаже. Далее я хотел бы давать свои показания. Позднее. Позднее, позднее. Наш защитная признала вину. Вот она обратила внимание сюда, что совершила она этот поступок по неосторожности, не, не намеренно. Соответственно, все детали будут, наверное, чуть позже, но мы, безусловно, надеемся на снисхождение суда. Почему? С учетом всех обстоятельств дела, с учетом личности нашей подзащитной. We're learning just right now from, from Brittany Griner's lawyers speaking outside of the courtroom in Moscow. Uh, in today's hearing, she pled guilty to all charges, saying, though, that it was not her intent to break mm. the law. She was packing in a hurry. And so uh, the, the, the plan here, according to the lawyers, that they are now counting on leniency uh, from the Russian courts uh, uh, with recognition of, of that lack of intent to commit a crime. Uh, I think, of course, there is now uh, perhaps a consideration that this might speed up a verdict and get to, as I, I was talking before, uh, get to a, a point where the Russians are willing now to talk about prisoner exchanges. Just earlier today, we heard the Russian foreign, uh, deputy foreign minister, Sergei Rabkov, say essentially this much, that there was nothing to talk about uh, between the two countries on prisoner exchanges until this court hearing, until this process had concluded and also uh, relations improved. So one step at a time. But the, you know, one way to look at this is a little bit step is a step closer to uh, those prisoner swap negotiations. Wow. U.S. has been saying that she was wrongfully detained. And now, of course, you have her plea. She has told the court uh, today that she didn't intend to break the law. Now, leading up to all this, her family, her, her wife have been pleading for officials to bring her home. Uh, in fact, there was a, a rally in Phoenix yesterday, and her wife, uh, Sherelle, spoke to the crowd. Take a listen. I'm frustrated that 140 days have passed since my wife has been able to speak to me, to our family, and to her friends. I'm frustrated that my wife is not going to get justice. Now, she actually spoke to President Joe Biden and uh, Vice President Kamala Harris yesterday. Uh, Biden actually received a letter from Griner pleading for him not to forget about her and other American detainees. And he, he wrote a response, and he read that to Griner's wife during a phone call yesterday. So the White House at that time released a statement that said uh, the president offered his support to Sherelle and Brittany's family, and he committed to ensuring they are provided with all possible assistance while his administration pursues every avenue to bring Brittany home. So that was the latest yesterday. And then, of course, we've got uh, the, the details coming out of the trial today. And the Kremlin has maintained that her arrest and her trial was not political, that this was about the alleged drug possession. They've been saying that all along. And Russia's deputy foreign minister actually criticized uh, the publicity around this case and the response from the White House just yesterday saying it, it really wasn't helping matters and, and suggesting that uh, a prisoner swap uh, would be difficult, because that's been something that's been swirling around, the possibility of a prisoner swap. But the thing is, although uh, he has said that would be difficult, we have actually seen a prisoner swap happen between the U.S. and Russia just recently. Uh, in April, the U.S. swapped a Russian pilot convicted of drug trafficking for a former Marine convicted of assaulting Russian police officers. But that swap only came after he had already spent nearly three years behind bars 
in Russia. And here we are in Griner's case. She is now pleaded guilty and she is facing a maximum sentence of 10 years. And the interesting thing is I, I had spoken with a Russian law expert recently who said that if there was going to be a prisoner swap, then likely the trial would first need to wrap up. There would need to be a conviction before anything like that could be a possibility. So we'll see if that is actually what's going to play out here. We'll talk